It seems whenever Akira Toriyama is involved, main characters just don't stay dead. Welcome back to Chrono Trigger Plus. Previously, we saved Chrono. He's back in the team. Now we have a whole bunch of side quests to do, but we're going on a side quest of my own. The Chocobo side quest. We're going to the Cult of Lavos. Chrono is great against a boss of this area, but Luca's better. Also, Isla is surprisingly helpful here. And I'm going to bring Frog, because Frog needs superior healing. Sorry, Robo, you're just not great at healing people yet. We'll work on that. Also, I have a bunch of tabs, too. Uh, I'm going to save a few magic tabs for Chrono, because his magic is beast. And I should save the power tab for him, too. But a couple of magic tabs for Frog. You know what? That power tab will go to Isla. And since we're already here, might as well go to Whole Hog. Luca is really good at killing Cthulhu's. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Killing Cthulhu's. I thought that dialogue would start up again. Now we could have a fair shot at these guys. There's minions all over the place in here. They have shadow magic attacks. That's why Frog doesn't take much damage from him, because he's wearing a Dark Helm. Luca's Flare is absolutely beast here. She will absolutely wreck the minions in one shot. And it's cheap, because she has a Gold Stud. And we also got the Dropkick, which is an I Love Frog dual tech, is pretty good. But here we're going to need safety against fire, safety against uh, shadow damage, and just regular physical. Isla's got a red plate. Shadow is a bigger problem here, so I'm going to give her that. And we don't have any anti-fire helmets, I don't think. So she's going to be at least weak against fire. Another Cthulhu over there. There's Cthulhu's everywhere in this place. This is a Chrono Trigger Plus only area. It's a repurposed Colosseum. There was always this little Colosseum in the original game, but it had no real purpose, it was just there. They made it into something. And as it was hinted way earlier in the game, it's a repurposed Guardia Castle, even though Guardia's castle does not look like this. Blowing up those Cthulhu's, I'm going this way. There's a very specific puzzle you gotta do in here. There's some really strong enemies. They are... roughly, um... Black Omen level. So we're killing Black Omen enemies right now. And that shows that we could definitely do that dungeon, but it's a struggle. This is what I like to call the Inner Sanctum. Inside there is a completely pointless loop-around room that gets you into a fight. Or maybe two, I forget. But there's no reason to go there. There is a room back here, guarded by those dudes. But we don't want to mess with them just yet. They absorb shadow magic. Because they're Cthulhu's, of course. But me, I'm just going to be burning Cthulhu's. It's Luca time! At least until it's time for the boss of this area. Then it will be Chrono time, because Chrono needs a single tech attack ability. And Luca really doesn't have those. Oh, actually, doesn't she? I'm pretty sure she does. Dual techs for Luca. I said dual techs for. Wow, a menu fail! I want. I want the. Over there. There we go. What do we got here? What's good with her? Oh, she got the fire spin. That's good. The blaze kick. Yeah, we could do some single tech damage with Isla. Blaze kick is pretty good here. I think you could do about 2,000 damage. Ah, oh, different kind of Cthulhu. Let's just go around him. Judgment. That seems like a password. 
If you have Chrono here, you miss out on some extra dialogue. Frog has nothing to say on the matter. Also, Servant wants to fight. Servant is kind of, uh, physical resistant. Has a little bit more HP than minions. As you can see, Frog cannot do a heck of a lot of damage in it to him. But there's the Blaze Kick in action. Yeah, I think this team could handle that final boss pretty well. We'll be missing out on a life ability, and the life ability will probably come in handy. But we'll be good. So you have to find that note. It tells you about judgment. We're gonna take that back into the main room. We're gonna get some battles along the way. These Cthulhu's keep respawning until you solve enough of the puzzle to make them not respawn anymore. So that means more fires of science! This is why I make Luca a secondary mage. She does some good elemental damage. There's not many things that absorb fire in this game. I don't think so, anyway. Nothing important. Looks like someone's asking for a blaze kick. I'm happy to oblige. We should try out the drop kick, too, but it doesn't do as much damage. Yeah, just exploding Cthulhu's left and right. That's how Luca goes. Might as well try a drop kick on this thing. If we had Chrono in the party, we would have the 3D attack with Isla and Frog. It's just basically an X strike and a triple kick. That's the drop kick! And we can just throw a bomb at this guy. Blows him up good! Oh, blows him up real good! Even our bombs do some extra damage here. You can't do anything with this computer unless you know about Judgment. Lavos and Time Portals. It's corrupted, and not even Luca could do anything about it. All I could do is unlock a door. The door is back in the main Sanctum room. Remember where those blobby guys were? We gotta go there. Oh, guess who wants to get exploded some more? They were like, man, we could really use them being exploded today. Hesitation and everything. They had to think about what they wanted. Would you guys stop focusing on Frog? I mean, heck, it's not even optimal. I was the one that doesn't have any... Oh, wait, yeah, she does. I mean, Luca doesn't have any Shadow Resist. She has the safe helmet and some Fire Resist from the Tobin suit. That's about it. No, they decided to attack the person that takes half of shadow damage. We do want to have some extra armor on hand, because the final boss could be pretty nasty. And you always get into an inner sanctum fight right here. Now we got some blobs! I'm not going to do it, but you could steal magic rings off the blobs. But Fire Spin is really broken here. If you hit the blobs with magical attacks, they will counter you with magic. Not magic, uh... A magical drain. They'll steal your MP if you use magic on them. But they don't count Fire Spins as magic. Or any of Luca's bombs. So you could use those against them. Because it's mostly physical damage. And we can get blobs in the party. Just fire spin them. Throw mega bombs at them. That'll take care of them nice and easy. Yeah, this place has a major Cthulhu infestation. We're gonna have to use fire on it. We're gonna have to burn the suckers out. Burn them wide open. There's another servant here. He doesn't like when we do this. I opened your door, buddy. What are you gonna do about it? Eh? You're gonna watch us heal. Let's see what you're gonna do about it. This thing has an earthquake attack. It'll pick up and drop people. It's just a more durable minion, really. 
Except it doesn't really have any shadow damage. It's just mostly physical. I'm waiting for that blaze kick to show up. That ain't blaze kick. It does doom, but it, it doesn't do anything. Hey, give me the blaze kick. Oh, Islet doesn't have enough MP for blaze kick. I thought Luca was just taking her sweet time. But yeah, Isla is not exactly MP efficient. For one, we have a charm top on her. For two, her physical abilities take up a lot of MP for some reason. Good thing we got some full ethers, which aren't even full ethers. They don't do as described on the tin. Should be a full heal of MP. Why the heck not? I mean, we already have mana efficiency out the wazoo. So now we open the door. There's only one final room left in this godforsaken place. This chrono forsaken place. And it involves more Cthulhu murder. This is the last fight in here. And it will be solved with Unga power. Unga Bunga. Isla's crazy effective against Cthulhu's, what could I say? Even her regular spin could do quite a bit of damage. But that's it for them. We purged to Cthulhu. There's only one thing left to do. Fight the boss in this area. Luckily, there's a safe point here. I'm not quite on it. Again. That should work. Yeah, there we go. Definitely want to be topped off. Definitely want fire resistance, shadow resistance, and possibly water if you could get it going. The mermaid cap is on Chrono, I believe. Yeah, he's wearing Mermaid. Half... oh, def don't want to do that. Definitely don't want to do that. I'm already wearing the white plate. Isla could use the Mermaid Cap for a little bit extra defense and resistance to water. So she's only weak against fire. Luca is weak against shadow and Frog is weak against... well, fire as well. Because we have to deal with this thing. This is not a regular Lavo Spawn. This is a Elder Lavo Spawn. And it hates your guts. I'm pretty... Oh, yeah, she's the one that was weak against water. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't have water resistance. That thing happens. That thing happens a whole bunch. If you can afford it, and you don't get double spiked like we're gonna get right here. Yeah, that kills that kills the that kills the Luca. Triple spike? No, I disapprove, good sir. Yo, it's rewind time. I forgot to save. Let's get away from that guy. If you're really unlucky, stuff like that could happen. He will cut you wide open. I'm saving. Now, try not to triple spike me again, I hate that. I had the fracture time for you. Oh, yeah, let's just water Luca again, that's great. It's a good thing I brought life water along with me. Are you really gonna try and triple spike us again? Because I disapprove of that. See, Chrono would be really good here because... He would have more defensive power. Because that water is kind of physical. And he would also have that life spell. We're really going at it with these spikes, aren't we? So this is what I hate about Elder Lavo spawns and being underleveled. They're extremely fast, and they will rip you wide open. But you could charm some good stuff off them. You know what? Protect would be a good idea here. Because of those spikes. Off the head, you could get a Haste Helm, which is 
Well, obvious. It's a helm that gives you haste. If you're bold enough to try and rob its shell, then you could also get a safe helm off them. Would you stop with the spikes? Stop with the spikes! You want to get off the spike train. Holy crap! How many spikes are, was that in a row? How many spikes was that in a row? Was that at least five? I wasn't counting. Well, at least that's good. Frog will absorb that. We haven't really even done much damage to him. Because he's just going whole hog on us. Killing Luca over and over again. Make sure Isla's healed up. The reason why I brought Frog. He has a full heal on his party. On his inventory. On his menu. I'll get the word right eventually. Luca's kind of the odd girl out here. Oh, that's going to kill her again, thanks. And we need to start doing damage, too. Besides what Frog is doing. As you can see, we can't really see how much damage we're doing to him. Oh yeah, let's just do some more water damage. I had a lot easier time with this when I had Chrono in the party. But it was also slower going, because you can't do as much damage. I'm doing this because of Blaze Kick. Can we finally get one of them off, by the way? A Blaze Kick? Because that would be great. There's a Destruction Zone! I think it does Shadow Damage. Yeah, it does. At least it doesn't kill the Luka. The Luka needs to be here to set this lava spot on fire. I'm not quite sure how much damage that was, but I'm going to assume it's a heck ton. Frog is on heal duty. Healing overtime. Luckily, he's wasting his Dark Bombs on Isla. Which means he gets more Blaze Kick. Stop targeting the shell. I just don't like when you target that shell. I just know I'm going to misclick once, and I'm going to have to yo rewind time because I don't want to get hit by another spawn needle. Because look how much damage this thing does. That's like half our health. I do like the touch of having the Lavos music here, though. I am getting very upset with the amount of needles getting thrown at me. Very upset indeed. Man, it's a good thing that Frog is a real good party healer. He's palading it up. And we killed it! Awesome! Handshakes all around! I wonder what our prize is for all this. Besides that haste helm we just got. Auto haste! Usually you're only able to steal this from the Elder Lavo spawn in the Black Omen. But since there's one here, we get it early. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw that on Chrono. A hasteful Chrono. And you know what, Isla, you served your purpose. You killed the biggest Cthulhu of them all. We'll bring... Uh, this'll work. Obviously Luca, because look at this technology. It's a log from after the Lavos attack, several hundred years later. They made a fort out of Guardia Castle. Yeah, that sure didn't work in their favor, did it? Hmm, Balthazar has shown up. Maybe they could use time powers to stop Lavos. How about you don't do that? Hey, let's bring in the child of the planet destroyer. They're easy to kill, right? You were trying to defeat Lavos this whole time. 
But they weren't protagonists, so they failed miserably. At least it opens this. A time gate? We have all the time gates! What is this doing here? Well, you know what? Science calls. Not expected at all. Well, might as well see where it goes. This is new. Also, this time gate seems a little broken. All these sprites are a little off. This chair is glowing, and that upsets me. It looks like they tried to mesh together 1000 AD and 2300 sprites, and it's a little weird. Where the heck is this? Oh, uh, yeah, we were just stopping in. Who are you? It's Gob. Pretty sure I remember him being mentioned in Chrono Cross, or maybe it was a DS Chrono Trigger. They have an R-Series here. Well, we wouldn't know anything about that, would we, Robo? So this is Gob's robot repair shop. Where are we? More importantly, when are we? It's Nabot, the head mechanic. I get it, it's Tobin backwards. A relative of yours, maybe, Luca? 1999! Six months before Lavos appears. Oh, you guys are in for a bad time. But well, we've made it. In the year 1999, ain't gonna need to tell the truth, tell no lies. Everything you think, do, and say is in the pill you took today. This ROM hack has a completed version of 1999 in it, including the lean square, kept underneath a giant dome. Where kids are playing. No idea what's going to happen to them. First ever Millennial Fair? Did you guys lose your history books? Oh, oh by the way, the music's gone now. Where's our fair music? Huh? Where's the- oh! Where's the Gato? Ah, they're up to robot battles now. They're gonna have real steel showing up. It's gonna be the title fight between Iron Gonzalez and Gutsman. Well, Lucas not testing her time machine. 900 years too late for that. Looks like they're not fated to be. It's inside a climate-controlled dome, with no music. We're installing the speakers. Some things are missing, though, because 1999 depends on some side quests being done. And we didn't really do any of those yet. Welcome to Eris Dome! Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, hey, Robo, you know this guy? I... I'm not quite sure what you just signed us up for. We'll get back to that. I don't understand you and your crazy robot talk. I'm from, like, almost a thousand years into the past. Yeah, time travel exists back then. Don't ask questions about it. Typical, regular 1999 residents. So Gob is kind of like this age is Luca. Lots of robot stuff going on. There's one of their futuristic Roombas. And a futuristic kitten. Did you check under the bed? That's usually where I leave them. Again, that music doesn't last very long, does it? It keeps on freaking out.
Has he tried a three-step plasma transformer? Also, he seems to have an octopus problem. Wow, Luca, you just dropped a bomb on that kid. Even though, to be honest, that should have been in a separate text box. Like, you read that, and then you read the other thing. That would have been a better impact. Well, it looks like they got rid of the Xenon Bridge instead of the Xenon Gate. Does it still clone people? Nope, they got a bigger problem. There's a wasteland. You know, apocalyptic times. Obviously can't go there because we need to fix Fiona's problem in a side quest. Might as well get to the main event. The marketplace. Ah, good, there's music here. And there's people everywhere. You're gonna be seeing them clone again. Ah, you get it? It's future. Okay. Way to date yourself, game. Way to go. Masamune! The planet of the Riptides! I heard Michael Bay made that movie. It's not too great. Is there anybody else to talk to around here? Princess? I think we need to meet a princess of 1999. I didn't even think they had a monarchy yet. There seems to be some invisible walling going on here. Masamune! We'll get back to that. We're busy shopping. Checking out what's here. Which is plenty. Like this shop. But then get your peanut butter. Why are you telling me? Tabs. Are they selling tabs here? They're selling tabs here. They're also selling lapis. But more importantly, they're selling tabs here. And cat food. So usually you could only get cat food from the Norstein Beckler's lab. But we just bought enough cat food to feed Kronos cat for a century. More importantly, we could buy permanent upgrades to our stats. As long as we're able to farm money for them. You see? You see? I, this is all planned. This was all planned. Power tabs are on the cheap. Crazy! And I could sell all this useless gear I've been carrying around with me. Hey, that's, we, we, we don't... Well, Robo needs a Gigaton arm. I forgot to equip it on him. But like Star Sword, Mammo Tusk, Aeon Blades, Zenmato. I'm keeping it for sentimental reasons. Get rid of the Sage and Dream stuff. Yeah, I could buy a lot of tabs on the off screen. Also, this thing. Okay. Um, I know somebody that might be into trendy stuff. Marl, check out what we got. I think you should have an exclamation point in there, but... Yeah, sure, freak your dad out. It's only a thousand gold. Marl, this is why we don't bring you in the party. You go play with Inky. She has a future octopus pet. Why the heck not? It's 1999, we could do whatever we want. We could just spawn out of the woodwork, like this guy. I'm not even gonna try to understand what that reference is. This casual conversation in the street. Uh, you could look... this all looks sketchy to me. We're in the back alley. That guy just spawned. Like, cloned himself. The best shopping in the world, in Western City. This looks like some kind of teleporter deal. It sure is! I think there's some more things to see in that shopping center now. We'll be back to the teleporter later. Teleportation technology! I love it! I'm sure there's some more things to see in here now. 
Let's go to the Poyozo shop. Then sell what? What didn't they sell? Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm pretty sure they're expensive for a reason. Well, they're selling robots in here. We could get a robot if we wanted. Nestor's Pawn Shop. And they're selling power chips. Is that the same as a power tab? Because that's the same price as a power tab around here. So they discovered tab technology. They also was discovered something called a chip. Where is it in my inventory anyway? Man, I got a lot of junk. I ain't right there. Is it all the way down to the bottom? Hero metal. I don't see the power chip. I think it might be in some kind of invisible bag of holding. But trust me, power chips are different than power tabs. They'll be useful for something you could only do in 1999. So we'll deal with that later. I should equip Robo while I'm on this screen. A mighty wallop! We're gonna need some mighty wallops. More importantly, there's this thing here. It's an iBot drone! 10,000 golds! Or G! You still use G in the future? You know what? Sure. We got our own pet! We could also shut it down. If we're gonna go with tacky names, we're gonna call you Drono! It's a fourth party member! It has a tendency to glitch out. And, like, not follow you in some places. But trust me on this, it's there. And it's it's quite powerful. It, it's pretty powerful. Do a lot of damage and kill enemies instantly if you're not careful, power. Though the game is kind of programmed that if they have, like, counter things, they won't drop their guard. So you gotta turn it off sometimes. Now that we're done shopping, let's go catch a movie. Let's go see Masamune! Then we could end it for today. Just down in front! Oh, they don't even have any intros, that's good. H hey, Frog, it's you! You're a heroic night person! That doesn't seem historically accurate. They're probably like, what? Did the hero dies? Horribly? Burned to death? Oh, that won't sell at all. I don't remember fighting skeletons there. Wow, Magus! How did you get to 1999? How did you get a hold of the Masamune? I thought you were allergic to it. Well, that's actually pretty accurate. And that too! Oh, Frog is getting some PTSD. Oh, this is pretty similar. Except Frog looking a little funky. Masa and Mune are looking a little green. We brought you a hero's badge. I like how he's called Sir Chrome. Instead of Sir Chrono. And Madam Luca. And Princess Marl. And where's their fateful steed? We met an old man from a different year. You know, the whole time travel spin would make really good in this movie. I think it is, but they got it completely wrong. I mean, they do have a blonde girl as Marl, that should work. I was enthused by cinematic mastery. Only cavemen understand intricacies. I 
again, they got the Magus, like, spot on compared to everybody else. But the 100 beasts? <laughs> Witch companions. What are you running for? That's a good shot. I guess they must have ran out of budget here. Oh, yeah, no, they had to sell it somehow. Oh, you noticed that too. Oof. Brought to you by these people. They also worked on the ROM hack. Thanks, moron. Next time on Chrono Trigger Plus, we have a little bit more 1999 to discover, but then we're gonna have to head back to our own time. We've got some side quests to unlock. Because it'll open some more areas in here. Good night, folks.